Hey, what's up everybody? It's your boy Ryan out here. We got some uh, some stuff that I've been hearing out here at this farm, Ben Haven Farms. So we're gonna check it out, see what this is all about. So uh, let's let's go, shall we? Not quite sure what to expect out here. This is already, oh God. Look at that. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, today we're going to be doing Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Kind of like a photo tutorial how to. Where did I get my inspiration? Let's go over some camera settings. Let's go over the set, how I got things. So I'm going to link everything that I bought in the description. How I kind of did it, how I came up with the idea. So let's take a look and see what it looks like. I'm out here in the beautiful country of West Virginia uh, on my grandparents' farm. We got this lovely, lovely shed here that's rusted at all these cool textures and all this kind of barn farm feel, you know, for Texas Chainsaw. I thought it was appropriate. I had some friends generously donate some skulls for me. I got, of course, a leather face mask. We got the iconic hammer. We have teeth. We have rusted blades. We got, of course, the yellow chainsaw. We lucked out and we found this Texas farm truck license plate. So really to send it home, I tied some twine around some bones. We got just a lot going on here. And the reason is I want it to be chaotic. I want a sense of unease. I didn't want it nice, neat, and organized. Like, Leatherface is not a meticulous killer. He's very just... You know, he'll saw down his own door to get to kill someone, right? So very not clean cut, chaotic, shaky camera angles. And later in post, I want this to be a very yellow, vibrant. It's a very cloudy day out here. It's actually only like 50, 60 degrees, so it's kind of cold out. But it created some awesome lighting, some nice even lighting. And that's why I kind of posed it here at the beginning of the shed because the back of it is very black. And it's kind of hard to see, so in the picture, it creates this really cool you know, boom, this looks super bright and lit up, and then the back is nice and dark to give that kind of mysterious ambiance of, you know, I guess the, the killer himself, right? So I think if Leatherface was going to just throw his stuff asunder, this might be a little more organized and neat, but obviously I wanted you to be able to recognize, boom, we got Leatherface masks, we got some bones, and that was part of my inspiration is I wanted it to be chaotic, so I kind of just threw them about in a random fashion. I didn't want it to look too organized. So I've got, you know, even down to like, I put teeth in there, because, you know, if you remember in the movie, there's teeth, bones. I could have added feather, but I felt like it was just a little too much. That's why I kind of like the dirt, the textures, all these wrinkles and cracks and stuff like that. So this is just kind of a general idea of how the, my thought process and how I go through doing a lot of these. So let's, uh, let's pan over to the studio. Hey guys, thanks for joining me live today here down at the studio. Uh, got a little tune for you. We're gonna kick off today's video with a little, you know. All right, so that's it. That's all we're gonna do for that. You know, nothing to. All right, so you know that was a little of my wild western side. Just kind of getting in the mood here for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre prop shoot that I did today. Much like the other shoots, uh, you know, I kind of wanted to go into how, why, the themage of it. So the first thing I normally do to get into the mood, you know, of the killer, I don't actually kill and eat people, you know, allegedly. I like watching the movie first, and I chose the 1974 version to go ahead and dive into it and feel the, the grittiness. And if you've seen it, you know the cinematography in that movie is amazing. And it's not an overly gory movie or bloody, so in the shoot, I didn't want it to be gory or bloody, and I wanted it to be kind of artistic and almost look like a crime scene, maybe the aftermath of what had happened of his props his equipment and materials and stuff like that. And I think a really easy way to do that is I started off with a bit of grunge. I wanted it to look, you know, gross. I had all the dirt, all the materials, his bones and everything, which I kind of explained in the earlier part of this video. So I wanted to go more into the photography aspect of it. So the first thing I consider when taking the picture is how do I want to set my camera up? What lens do I want to use? So my favorite lens to do for my product shoots is my 50 millimeter fixed. It drops all the way down to a 1.8 and, you know, ideally doing something like this, though, where I want a lot of it in focus. And that's kind of just the theme of the older Texas Chainsaw movies, right? They didn't have this crazy depth of field and in and out of focus. So the first thing I did, I put on my 50 millimeter camera. I got everything strewn about 
and I set my camera to f-stop of f uh, 4.5. My shutter speed, I do a two, one two fiftieth of a second, and that's just to give me as much light as I need to work with without it being blurry. Obviously, I'm not moving. This isn't a fast-paced action shot, so you can drop it down. Depending on your lighting situation, what you want to do, obviously, you can increase it or decrease it. And I had my ISO at 100. I know some of these pictures I added a little grain to because I wanted them to feel vintage and, you know, go along with the aesthetic of the gross grunge uh, distortion feel. But I wanted to add it in post. So I know there's a lot of elitists or whomever out there. It's like, well, you could have just had an I I high ISO and that would have given you that natural grain. But I wanted the, I you know, the uh, option to do either or. So once I got everything all laid out, I took the pictures, I did take tons of angles, right? We have digital cameras nowadays, you're not shooting on film on anymore. So just take as many pictures as possible. Once I got all the pictures I was happy with, I actually ended up doing about 50 total. I narrowed that down to 10 that I really liked. Then I narrowed it down to three that I was like, okay, these are my favorite three. These are the ones I'm gonna go with. Of which I knew I wanted to do one, at least one in black and white. So some of the photos I actually purposely overexposed with my flash. And that's kind of just to add to the aesthetic of the, you know, 70s, 80s kind of shoot how they would have maybe taken a picture or a crime scene picture, right? Because they're not meant to be artistic. They're meant to be uh, able, they can document everything. Everything's well lit, the color's correct. So that's why some of them back then would have seemed overexposed or on purpose. So once I get all my pictures that I'm satisfied with, I rate them in Lightroom. That way it's easier just to organize. I go ahead, I throw a couple presets on, or I look through the presets rather. And I know a lot of people dog on presets, but I actually like looking through it to give you quick options. Now, I do think it's dumb if you just throw a preset on and call it done. I think you should go through and actually look and make sure, is that how you want your picture to be? Because yeah, while I planned out this shoot and I had a general idea of how I wanted to look, there's nothing wrong with maybe making things different colors are going through. And that's why I really appreciate about presets. So let's talk about this first picture I got here. So for this picture, it was ISO at 100, f-stop of f4, shutter speed 1 250th of a second. And I actually did a focal length of 16 millimeters. I put on my wide angle lens. And the reason being, I wanted the chainsaw. I wanted it to be distorted. So you can see there's a lot of blur there at the bottom. Even though I had that f-stop of f4, it was intentional because I wanted your eye to be led to the mask, right? That's the focal point of this picture. And you can see all the little rusted chains, all of the, the hammer, the, you know, the blade leads you right to the mask, the forefront's blurred, and then as your eye moves up, it's boom, it's perfectly in focus. So as you can see, the info tag. I wanted to remove the info tag, so I have a quick little video here. I just took the pen tool, I outlined it, and then I moved it over, you know, the area. And then I just did a content aware fill and Photoshop's magic took it right away. So we, I love how far modern day technologies come. This is what we started with. And then we end up with the final picture here. And overall, I'm really satisfied with how it turned out. We have that warm yellow. We have all the grittiness and grunginess. And I didn't add any grain to it because I wanted to keep it nice and clear. So starting off with this one, I really liked this picture. I think this is going to be my main picture that I ended up going with. Uh, of course, this is the unedited one we did in the shed. It has, you know, you can see, you clearly see the tie. It's got the teeth in the front. And I really, I loved the, because in the movie, obviously, there's a bunch of different teeth, molars, and all that stuff. And you can see a little bit of the bones. There's a little twine. Of course, the iconic chainsaw hammer. And I was lucky to stumble upon this Texas farm use only license plate, which really just added to the photo. So I'm very satisfied with how it turned out. And I did kind of the same process. We can see we have the little, the green like pull knob, and then we have the infographic, which I really didn't want on there. So I went ahead and I changed the pull knob to a more yellow color. I think it was just more fitting for this picture. And I, of course, got rid of the infographic because it just seemed too modern, even though this is an older style chainsaw. I shot this at 100 ISO. We did an f-stop of 4.5 and a shutter speed of 1 250th of a second. And I actually switched back to my 50 millimeter lens. I wanted this to not be as distorted. You know, I loved the distortion of the other one, but this one I wanted it to be more full frame. I wanted it to be the appropriate no distortion, really. I mean, about 50 millimeters is where you don't have any distortion because if you shoot anything above that, it distorts the other way, right? It doesn't look as bloated and as big. It's more, it actually will make it less round and all that fun stuff. So moving on, I really liked this picture because it's that top-down view. I feel like this would be your iconic, and of course, like I said, this is the unedited one. This is more of like your crime scene photo. And I actually took this one with flash. 
because I wanted it, everything to be full in focus and, you know, I wanted you to see everything, all the little textures, details, all the cracks in the mud, all the little animal bones, the twine. And what I did is I went ahead, I threw a black and white preset on here, as you can see, and it really just makes it pop with that, you know, overexposure. You can go in and edit a couple little things here and there. But my favorite settings in Lightroom to do with this one, because I actually didn't have to do anything in Photoshop for this. So what I did is the Clarity and Dehaze tab, or the slider there in Lightroom, I think they're super overlooked and underrated. You can add so much texture and detail, and even though this was perfectly in focus, right? Because I shot it at f4, and it's still, you know, 2 50th of a second. I used my 50 millimeter because I didn't want that distortion. It still gave it this extra, like, super crispy detail, but then I was able to throw some Clarity and Dehaze on there, along with, I did add some grain to this photo. I just feel like the black and white needed the grain to be added on there. And we do have a bonus picture for you today. It's this big chungus. You might know him uh, from the Final Girl podcast. His name's Ryan Turner. So we're looking here at this unedited picture at his uh, grandparents. I think it was his grandparents or his dad's farm we did. They had this old uh, cellar full of, you know, potted food and, well, canned food, I should say. So moving on to the final product of Ryan's shoot, you know, we had the old chainsaw. Of course, we got the iconic Leatherface mask, and he actually wanted to do the mask from the later half of the movie, the pretty face mask, I believe it's referred to. So we got him in character and in full suit and actually shot from the outside. But I did that same method where I took a flash, I purposely overexposed it. And then after I got all my settings in Lightroom, you know, I'd black and white, of course, I wanted to add a little extra detail, so I went ahead and distorted it. So I wanted to make it look like an old photograph. So I added some dust, grain, a little bit of Photoshop texture. I found a picture online of just where somebody had photocopied something and I had transferred the photocopy texture onto the photo and then it messed around with the, you know, burn and dodge to give it that more, more vintage look, I suppose, to really kind of encapsulate Texas Chainsaw. That's going to about do it for here. Uh, you know, we went through a little bit of Lightroom settings, a little bit of Photoshop settings. We went through Ryan being a big chungus. Uh, I think everybody already knew that, but, you know. Well, I want to go ahead and mention thanks, Ryan, for helping out with this video. Thanks, Michael, 13 Palm Trees, all that jazz. And here is some beautiful footage of my grandparents uh, on the subject, so enjoy. <laughs> Gran, what do you think of the, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre at Ben Haven Farm, West Virginia? Uh, I think it was a terrible, terrible tragedy should never have happened on our farm. But then the FBI <laughs> came and found us, so yes, I don't know so what we're going to do now. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to have to come and take away the remains. It cannot stay here at Ben Haven Farm. So why did you do it? Did I do it? <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't think, I didn't think I was the guilty one. Over there he stands. That well, dirty there he is. rat. Just had the, to have, the dirty rat. Just had to have something to do. <laughs> something to entertain our grandson. So kind of just to wrap up here, get out there, take some pictures, experiment around. I personally love doing the product photo shoot. You know, I was inspired by other YouTubers and content creators. Just get out there and try and see what happens. Also, more importantly, learn to shoot manual. Learning to shoot manual on your camera will open up so many doors and possibilities and let you get cool camera effects like this. You know, um, I want to emphasize I didn't shoot like any automatic stuff and I know I'm already going to get hate comments. I can't believe you're using Lightroom presets and this and that. I think they're a great way to get in and see quickly, you know, a bunch of different options. I think it, it actually gets me going creatively. I knew going into this, I wanted to look dirty. I wanted to look grungy and I wanted it to be yellow, you know, and it, that also fits the aesthetic of Leatherface, you know, his iconic apron and his chainsaw, everything's yellow, but also play with different lenses. You know, I love my 50 millimeter. Uh, it's a terrific lens. It's super cheap. It goes down to 1.8 uh, aperture. So it's great. But if you want to do cool things with distortion, switch it up to a wide angle lens, you know, shoot it 16 millimeters really up close. And that'll give this crazy, you know, referencing the other picture, the chainsaw looks enormous in comparison to the mask and everything. So get in there, have fun, just take a bunch of pictures, uh, you know, and if there's any questions or comments regarding how I did this or something maybe I didn't cover, let me know. Uh, you know shoot me a comment, slide into my Instagram DMs, you know, whatever you want to do. Just let me know. And uh, I don't know, Daniel, do something, do something cool here. I don't, I don't know what to do. <laughs>
Hey, thanks for watching. Your support means a lot to me. If you enjoyed this video, and if you want to support this channel, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment any questions for the next video. Check out my Etsy and Instagram. I have a lot more content over there. I want to thank the Party Blarder for editing this video. I want to thank the Final Girl Podcast for helping film. And I want to thank Average Idiot for sound, filming, and just, you know, overall being a pretty decent fella. Go and check out their stuff. They have a plethora of content. If you want even more of this content, check out our parent company, 13 Palm Trees, at 13palmtrees.com. We have podcasts, photography, cosplay, streams, YouTube, basically everything but the kitchen sink. And if you want to support us, check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash 13 palm trees. I'll post the link in the description below. Just go buck wild, you know what I mean? In other days, you got cashes up disappearing. I'm not quite sure what to do with all of it. I just drink me a PBR and go to sleep at night and don't worry about none of it. <laughs> Thank you.